YouTube Oz it going the Goat Owls is back with the 10 rookies that look like the biggest steals at this way too early stage something we can revisit throughout the season but rookies been balling out in training camp and preseason so I wanted to highlight the 10 that have stood out the most in comparison to where they were drafted in the 2024 NFL draft so let's get to this countdown I do have a top 10 but I got to give a shout out to Jermaine Burton the Bengals receiver from Alabama drafted in the third round uh, the, this video was kind of based off not just preseason stats but where they are in the depth chart training camp you know probably look at practice uh, how the coaches feel about them but Burton is tearing it up in preseason really is you know it, leading receivers in receiving yards too he is playing a little bit deeper down the depth chart for the Bengals and against guys deeper down the depth chart but you see the talent that he has down the sideline with his speed his hands maybe the best hands in the draft so wasn't a crazy mega steal around the third round but we knew his talent said he was probably a little bit better than that the only thing is a little bit deeper down the depth chart, you know, wish he was getting more reps with the ones, even more with the twos, you know, in practice. I think he's talented enough to be higher on the depth chart. We'll see if anything changes, but does look really good uh, later in the games in the, in those preseason games. Uh, so to the top 10, number 10, the Bears rookie pass rusher from Kansas. They took him in the fifth round and we knew at the time was probably a really good value pick. Probably could have went in the third, maybe fourth if you're pushing it. They get him in the fifth. He has a really good showing in his first preseason game. Two and a half sacks. Looked like a natural, and he's supposed to be a raw prospect. That's kind of why he dropped down a little bit. You wish to get off. There was a little more get off. You wish, uh, you know, he had a little bit more reps under his belt and kind of just one year taken off. But for him to kind of be taken off already and being that raw prospect, it's a really good sign for him. Mainly was that first preseason game, but should. Uh, you know, should get some reps throughout the year since the Bears have been looking for pass rushers. They did just trade for Daryl Taylor, though, cause so, so it could you know, bump him down the depth chart a little bit. Uh, number nine, going to go with Cardinals rookie Dadrian Taylor Demerson, the safety from Texas Tech. Uh, but he wasn't just a safety. We talked about that in the pre-draft process. I did like his play in the nickel position as well, but he can play both at a high level. He's showing out. Uh, you know, for them hearing really good things out of, out of practice, and he looks pretty good in preseason as well. A big-time playmaker, going to be used in different ways. He was drafted in the fourth, probably a guy that could have went in the third, maybe the second round, so he comes in at number nine. Sticking with the Cardinals, number eight, Xavier Thomas, their fifth-round pick from Clemson. Clemson's pass rusher was a big-time pass rusher, especially early in his career at Clemson. Dealt with some injuries, some durability concerns. It kind of knocked him down a little bit, but he he always had that talent, always had that flashy talent, super explosive get off, and he's showing it for the Cardinals so far in this preseason process, which is big because they they they're a little thin at that position. They need someone to step up there, especially given how Jalari went down. So Thomas is a guy that, I mean, he could end up being at the end of the year. Maybe it's a little bold, but I'm not really saying it's my prediction, but could end up being their best pass rusher. Uh, because they have a lot of young guys with upside and just somebody needs to step up, but Ajilari out, and he looks really good so far. So looks like a pretty good pick in the fifth and maybe kind of living up to the hype that he had when he was first going into Clemson. Number seven, the uh, Rams rookie receiver from Texas, Jordan Winnington. They took him all the way down in the sixth round. So these are the big gems, the steals that we're really looking for here. Uh, guys that, they, yeah, just found kind of hidden gems. He was a little bit down the depth chart for Texas. So that, that's how they did it. You know, they had really solid receivers ahead of them. So it kind of makes sense that maybe he is better than how it looked based on the depth chart behind two guys that went in the first two rounds. So been very productive for them in preseason. But not only that, he is second in the depth chart, uh, you know, behind the obvious starters, which is big. The Rams looking for always looking for more receivers. They want a rotation in there. They don't want to put the full load on a guy like Cooper Cup, for an example, uh, who may have some durability concerns. You know, so Whittington actually and Stafford uh, given good praise about Whittington. You know, he actually could be a factor this year. So that looks like kind of a gem deeper down the draft in the sixth round. Number six, going to go running back. Ray Davis from Kentucky. The Bills grab him in the fourth round, and he looks really good for them. Looks like I, I like, I love the combination that he's showing of explosiveness, like the home run ability, but physicality as well, being able to run inside. So they got some good looks at him. He looks really solid. Like there's an opportunity that he is getting a decent amount of carries every single week. You know, James Cook played very well last year, but it's not a full load 
pound the football type of guy. You know, they definitely need someone else to get carries, and Ray Davis is going to continue to climb up the depth chart. And there could even be definitely, I could see games year one for Ray Davis that he is splitting in some games with James Cook. So just having that type of presence, that type of back that they don't really have in there is big. He looks he looks legit. We're not really hearing much about the other running backs. Uh, you know, I'd say he look he's looking better than Trey Benson right now, who's getting some work. You know, so that's fantastic. So it looks like a steal for them that potentially having a high end number two in the fourth round. And, you know, maybe the preferred choice over Cook in some short yarded situations, I'd say most likely is. So it's going to feel like a 1B, I bet, at mo- at some part during the year, maybe in most way through it here. Uh, number five on the list. We got a first-round pick on the list, folks. We got a first-round pick. Mainly what I look for is the deeper, the hidden gems. We got some of those co- coming up, like the absolute steals that we weren't expecting. But a first-rounder does make the list. Tyler Guyton looks really good for the Dallas Cowboys, and I gave them an A-plus for this pick, so I was hyped about it. A guy that was a big riser for me like the last month, last couple weeks going into the draft, really was moving up my board a lot of upside. But for a guy with that much upside because of his traits, his strength, his length, his athleticism, he was pretty polished, I thought. Jumping from TCU to Oklahoma, he was pretty polished. So that made me go, all right, that's that's scary potential right there. So I move him up the list. I thought it was a perfect pick for the Bengals, and they took Mims ahead of him. I think that was a big mistake. They're going to regret that. I think Guyton will be better than Fashanu too, which might be a little bold. He looks really good. Like, you can make a highlight tape from his, just his reps in preseason, and, um, you know, that they're likely going to start him, at, start him at left tackle, obviously. So... Looks like another hit on the offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he should have went much earlier in the 29th pick. And I know around the time of the draft, I know a lot of people had him around that range. But, man, the last couple of weeks I felt like he was a – and they traded back to get him. So I factored that in as well. It just looks like a mega steal. He should have went He should have went way earlier. At the latest, he should have been the Bengals pick, the very latest. So looks like uh, looks like they got one. I feel pretty confident about that. Uh, with the Cowboys here. So first round pick comes in at number five. We do have some gems coming up. Let's, let's find a deep gem. Seventh round pick, and even makes it even deeper, is that he's from a very small school, Texas A&M Commerce, Levi Drake Rodriguez. From, now with the Vikings, he looks really good for them. A lot of praise out of practice and training camp, moving up the depth chart and looks really good in preseason. The Vikings need defensive tackles to step up as well. So this is a guy that's a... Uh, Late round flyer. Like, let's take a chance on one of these small school guys that have upside instead of taking one of these known guys that slipped a little bit uh, and see what we got. So, usually those types of guys are more likely to not make the, make the team. Sometimes the undrafted guys have a better shot. But not only is he going to make the team, he's going to he's gonna play for them uh, on Sundays. He's going to play for them just super high motor, um, firing off the ball. If you haven't seen any of him in preseason, the way he explodes off the ball is like a super athletic pass rusher, like an edge rusher almost. Um, so that that's interesting. It's not super common when you see it. It's a guy you want to work with. So I think he's going to get some playing time. Not he doesn't that hold a ton of expectations because he is a very late round pick, a kind of a, again a flyer pick. But that's one of those gems we needed for this video. We do have kind of another one, not as small, a much bigger school. But uh, how about Dominic Pooney, which I loved. I think a lot of you out there loved. It seemed like a fan favorite in the pre-draft process. Uh, third round pick, which. Maybe it doesn't sound like a mega steal, but it's feeling more and more like it now. The Niners have announced that he is their starting guard, right guard, um, and that's big because they needed somebody there pretty badly. And it's a guy that could play tackle as well, so it's a bonus. But he's doing a lot of the same things that he's doing on tape at Kansas. And he was a small school transfer. He's had times at tackle, at guard, and you know he might have played better at tackle, but his, his traits say guard. So that kind of made teams a little scared. Like, what do we do with them? But he, he is showing the same things that we loved on tape. He's showing it out there on the practice field and in the games for the San Francisco 49ers and why he's earned a starting job. And that's, man, you see reps with him hitting multiple successful blocks on one play. Uh, he's got unique movement, I'd say. He, it just feels like he's all over the place. And you see him spin and find someone else to block. If he doesn't have anyone like anyone uh, for his responsibility to block, he goes and finds somebody to hit. And that's what we, that's why we loved him. That's why we loved him so much. That's why he was a fan favorite because he did those things. Those really aren't things that make you an elite prospect. 
you know, not a lot of the great players have some of those things, but it makes you it makes you a fun player that you want to coach and that could have a long career. It's just will it translate translate to the NFL? And it sure already looks like it. So it's a guy that could be the best interior. It's a possibility too. It might sound bold, but it's really not. He can be the best interior offense lineman from this draft, and they got him all the way down in the third round, which it felt like he should have been a second round pick even at the time. Um, could could there? It just feels like a 49ers type of guy that they're going to turn into like a Pro Bowl player one day. And are we going to be saying this guy should have been a first round pick? I can see it. And if he, again, perfect situation because sometimes they have tackles going down, and he could fill in at that spot, and you can put someone else in at guard. So really excited about Pooney. Uh, number two, let's get a little deeper down the draft. I love looking for these gems. Jalen Harrell, uh, a big school though, Michigan national champion, Michigan Wolverines, seventh round pick. Their edge rushers really weren't they got so many guys drafted offensive line yeah, everywhere and they have two stud defensive linemen going to probably be first round picks next year but all those guys drafted you didn't hear anything about their pass rushers which weren't insanely productive but they disrupted and they created for their teammates so they were a little under the radar and i thought harrell was definitely the better of the two i know some people disagreed but still was uh just a hidden guy this is around the range he was supposed to go seventh round and it looks like the titans got one in him he is looking phenomenal playing for them right now and the titans badly need depth they, they need uh, so i think he's gonna play i think he's, he there's a shot he's their third pass rusher rotating in with and arden key's always been a rotating guy but he's gonna start opposite harold landry so we will see harold play uh, on sundays for the tennessee titans and that that's a it's a guy you, you they draft. And it's like, is he gonna make the team? Is he gonna? Because sometimes you do that with the seventh rounders, and and he looks legit. Like I feel like he's passing up Weaver, who was supposed to be a little better than he than he is. Uh, you know, so that that's fantastic for a team that badly needed some depth at the position. So he he looks he looks legit. He looks explosive. He's just getting after the quarterback constantly. And number one is actually not a deep draft pick. It's a second-round pick from Georgia, the Houston Texans rookie Kamari Lassiter, who has been running with the ones from the start, has been dominant in training camp and practice, just hearing insanely good things about him. I just The guy that I've heard the most about. And in this video, some people probably would base it off of preseason stats. It doesn't really hold a, a whole lot of meaning, uh, but what we're hearing about teams from coaches and where they are in the depth chart, how involved they are going against ones and playing with the ones. That's the biggest part here. So uh, it sounds like the Texans got themselves a first rounder in the second round. And that after you say that, it doesn't sound that surprising though, because at one point he was known as a first round player at Georgia and very early in the process. And he runs a slower 40 and then he goes downhill a little bit. And that's because it's very important at the cornerback position just for some reason, guys that run a certain 40 that's a little slow, they don't get a chance or they just never work out. That's like that one position. Even receivers can overcome that. But for some reason, corners typically can't. And we have to wait and see still with all these guys. This is essentially a prediction video, how how it seems right now. Uh, the season didn't even start yet, so it would be a lot of fun to take a look at this and take a look at it as we do it throughout the season, maybe a couple times. Uh, but... Yeah, Laster is playing like that first, better than that too. It, there's a chance that he could be the best corner from this draft this year. There's that. It's actually, if you had to put odds on it, he's got pretty good odds. Like he, you know, there's some legit corners from the first round and from the second round. But uh, this guy, I'm sure, is soaring up in terms of odds of winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, just a lot of good reports from that coaching staff. They love him. He's with the ones. He's a, seems like a really good duel with Stingley. You can put Laster on the inside. It's kind of where the league's heading. Where you kind you put guys where you need the most. Looking at Devin Witherspoon, who plays outside and inside, super physical. There's a lot of similarities there for Laster, who can play both. Uh, but I think we'll see him start on the outside because they do have. Uh, you know, King, Petrie, Ward that could all play in the inside. A couple of those guys could play safety as well. Uh, so it just sounds like they got themselves one. And it's it's one of those, like, right now we're all probably going, like, uh, I guess that kind of makes sense, <laughs> you know. Uh, but that is one to watch for Defensive Rookie of the Year. There's that much buzz on him right now. Let's see if he lives up to it. But I do love the pairing with him and Stingley, I was going to say, but really that whole secondary. So it's going to be really fun to watch him in that well-coached defense. Uh, so, yeah, I expected to maybe have a sixth or seventh round pick at one, but it really looks like 
the Texans may have a, a first round, not just a first round pick, but an earlier first round pick in the second round, a guy that could possibly, you know, might be tough. Maybe one of the edge rushers are, are the favorites, but win defensive rookie of the year. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on these guys. There's more guys that are turning heads. Some There's a lot of guys turning heads that weren't necessarily steal. I mean, the first overall pick in the in the draft, can't really consider like a guy like Caleb Williams a steal, but these guys are all turning heads. Let me know your guys' thoughts on some of the rookies in the comments. This is definitely a vi- video we can revisit when it's actually the real thing, real football, and, and we're kind of speculating right now, but it's fun. It's all fun. We have a bunch of trade videos on the channel that are definitely worth checking out. A lot of action's going to come here. Trades, cuts, waiver claims cuts again more trades and then the season starts we'll have our in-season content i am pumped hopefully you guys can join us for all that thanks for watching goodbye